Welcome back to the channel. My name is Daniel from Woodworking with Dash and today we're going to make three cutting boards from the timbers that we get from the big box store only. We have Jarrah, rubber wood and walnut. They're all plantation timbers and a lot of them are finger jointed but that's good because we're using sustainable timbers in our woodworking guys and that's what I like. Sustainable timbers and they're at a reasonable price too. Look at that guys, come out great. Just cutting a slab of jarrah now. I've got the three slabs cut to 550 and they're 600 wide now so I'll, I'll rip them down on the, uh, if you're going to rip them down on the small saw. But, the, but I haven't got a new blade from the big saw yet, which I need. And the small, small saw works great. It really does for ripping. So I rip them down to about three different sizes, I think. I don't know, I'm just playing this by ear at the moment. Um, first I'll rip them in half on the big saw. Makes it easier to handle. But we're struggling a bit. And cutting them on the small saws now. The small saws work great. Battery, battery operated. Works really well. I'll make an outfeed table for it, I think. Easy as. Got all the timber cut. I cut them into three different sizes 50 mil, 32 mil, and about 14 mil. And they're a bit, they're a bit rough, but they're a little bit of a rough blade. I put them all through the sander now to, to sand them up. The trick is not to take too much um, material off. But you know, you, you put all these through the planer and you take a you know, 16th of each one, that, that's probably three inches you're taking off. Three inches you're losing out of all these pieces. So, so I just take the bare minimum so you can get a good glue up. Okay, just putting it through the sander now. I set my sander set speed uh, very slowly. Like very clean edge on both sides now ready for the glue up. The trick is now we've got to make two decisions. We've got three different timbers here. The first decision is what order that we want the timber in across the finished board. Is it going to be Jarrah, Walnut and rubber wood, or rubber wood in the centre and the two darkers on the outside, which I'll probably do I think. That, that way I can do a better pattern. The pattern will be coming, will come in the centre from, from the red and from the walnut colour into the uh, rubber wood, which is not really white but it's the whitest timber that they've got. Oh, I think I'll do it that way. I think I'll put the, the two darker ones on the outside and the rubber wood in the centre. Right, that's the first decision I've made. The second decision I'll, I'll make, I'll set these up in about three different boards, I think. And three or four different boards, I'm not sure yet. And I'm going to stagger the width of the um, Jarrah and the uh, and the walnut. So when I glue them up, they're not all the same. You can see the wheels in my head going round and round, can't you? <laughs> Mate, I, sometimes, I, sometimes I think I need a bit of a bearing change. So I'll set them up now in, in the pattern that I think and I'll get back to you. Okay, you can see the uh, Jarrah there, three different sizes that I've set them up in. So when I cut them across the grain, I can turn them upside down and get a good pattern. Gluing them all up now. Another glorious day in the car, as I say. Time to take the panels out of the cramps. We'll see what we've got. We shall see what we shall see. Damn. Yeah, they came out good. A little bit uneven. Instead of putting them through the sander as one big unit now, and they'll put a lot of pressure on the sander, I'm going to cut them first to uh, 52 mil. And then I put them through with individual pieces. Clean them up that way and then we can play with the pattern. 
Yay! Okay, just cutting him there to 52 mil on the uh, on the saw. See how struggling on the new blade, bad. It's coming. I got it on order. It's coming. But it can't come quick enough for me. And instead of putting him through the sander, I put him over the bother. That worked well. That worked really well. A couple of times over the bother. But I'm just, there's something wrong here, guys. Can you pick it out? I'm doing something very wrong. You know what it is? Budding with long sleeves. You should never bud with long sleeves because they can get caught in the cutters. If my old foreman sees all that, he would kick me in the ass. And through the thickness there it goes. And just working on the pattern now, the one on the uh, right hand side is all done, just working on the centre one now. There you go, and I've, I cut edge, edge pieces. Four walnut and two jarrow edge pieces, just to make the boards a bit wider. Setting them all up now. All done. And gluing them up now. I trust the old sash cramp there. Good squeeze out of glue. Another glorious day in the shed, as I say. I put the boards in overnight to dry, glued them up. It's time to take them out of the cramps. We'll see what we've got. I love, I love my old uh, sash cramps. They work really, really well. Really well. Shit, all right. That worked too well. <laughs> okay, there it is. There, a little bit of glue left on underneath the cramps. I'll scrape that off, and um, I might even try putting through the uh, things. I've never done that before, but the bother worked well when I was cleaning them up before I glued them up. Then I might put them through the thickness, and we'll see how we go. Why not? Let's try it in once. Okay. And through the thickness as I go. Look at that, it worked great. Worked really well. That worked good, guys. I've never put in, in grain like that through a thickness before. The trick is, like the sander, just to take a little bit at a time. Because I tried to take too much first and uh, I stopped the thickness up. I just take a little bit at a time. I did get some tear out on the ends, but that was to be expected. But I haven't trimmed them anyway, so I don't care. So I've, I've trimmed them up now, both sides, and I'm debating whether to put them for the uh, sander. The problem with the sander, because this come up really nice, there's like little rough surfaces everywhere around it, but again, it hasn't been sanded yet. But if I put it through the sander, the sander smooth all right, but the sander leaves these little lines going all the way through it, these little sanding lines, I don't know, I don't know what they are. And they're a bummer to uh, sand, out, sand out with your, with your, with your random. So, I might leave these ones as they are, and uh, just use the random on it. Because at the moment, there's no lines. It's just roughness, so if I start with a, a rough pad first and work my way through the grits, it should be alright, I think. As I said, I'm playing this by ear, guys. So, the next trick is to just uh, dock them to length. And, uh, yeah, got a little bit of got a little bit of tear out on the side. So I haven't got my new saw blade yet. I might put the sides over the, um, over the butter again, I think. That might be the way to clean the sides up, and uh, then we'll dock them. Sounds good to me, guys. Sounds good to me. 
And then I've got to decide whether I'm going to put a juice groove in. I haven't made me juice groove jigs yet, but I haven't made cutting boards before. So this is the first time I have to make some some uh, juice groove juice groove jigs. Say that ten times. Juice groove jigs and a jig to put the uh, the grab holes in the sides or the ends. I'm not sure whether I put them underneath or in the end. I might be, I might make the jig to do them both. So they don't look all the same. And then I'm going to cut them on different angles just to vary them a bit. And we'll see, and we'll see how it goes. But they're a lot of fun to make, guys. They are, a lot of, they are a lot of fun to make. So, next trick is, instead of cutting them aside, I'm just going to run them over the, um, the uh, buzzer on the ends a couple of times just to clean them up, I think. But they've still got a bit of paint on them from the um, pine I used as uh, packers. How it is. Okay, cool. We'll do that. Okay, it's running my with bother now. Just to clean the uh, sides up. And to take care of any, any uh, tear up that I had. Cut them to a uh, length on the uh, saw now. I hope. Doesn't look good guys, doesn't look good. No. One cut it. That saw blade is so bloody blunt guys. I'm gonna wait for my new one. I ordered it on Amazon. Got gonna be here in a couple of days, I think. So they've gotta come from the States. I would have bought the blade locally, but um, I went and checked out the prices. Because I'm not rich. On Amazon for the same blade that I've got a Jabro 62 combination blade, I got it on Amazon delivered for 106 bucks. I sent them at the big box store for about 194 dollars, and at the one of the tool shops uh, for 220 dollars. So, mate, I'm buying it off Amazon. That's I buy a lot of things off Amazon. I think I own half of Jeff Jeff Bezos' yacht. I think I could put it in one of my older older blades. It's not as blunt as that, but I, yeah, no, I'll just wait for the new one. And in the meantime, I'll make the jig that does the, the juice grooves, I think. So I'll do that next. It's good to be retired. No pressure to get jobs out. When I was working, if this happened when I was working, I would have, had, I would have panicked and just bought a brand new blade at the tool shop and paid the, the dollar for it. But the job has to go out, has to go out. But for a long time there, I was in the shop fitting industry. And the shopping industry, you get no time to make anything. You get a job and they and they ring up two days later and go, is it ready yet? So I'm relishing the time that I've got to make things nowadays. There's no hurry. I'm retired. I don't need to go anywhere. I don't need to do anything. So I'll wait for the blade and we'll carry on. In the meantime, I forgot I had... A dogging saw, which worked quite well. It's hard getting through that long grain, but I got through it all right. And putting the handle in now, over the router. The trick is to do it in little increments. Same with the one we're trying to do every small increment. Raise it up a bit, do it again. Don't put too much pressure on your on your machines or your cutters. Do everything a little bit at a time. Go backwards and forwards. And just putting a half round now, a small, very small half round on the board, on all the edges. You see I'm back cutting it, save the tear out. I'm still waiting for my new saw blade for the big saw, but I, I forgot I had a uh, docking saw. And it worked well, I just docked it off. Getting old guys, it's not all just cracked up to be. Uh, okay, alright, okay. I've docked them all, 
and I've put the handle in and uh, I've uh, rounded over all the edges coming up good coming up good but I've decided I'm going to put it through this sander there's just a few marks that are too deep for the um, orbitals I think so I'm going to put it through the sander now and then I've got to do the juice groove which is the ju juice groove first no I'll, I'll put it through the sander first and then I'll do the juice groove I think and then I'll do the first uh, orbital sand and the spraying with water and blah 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 and then they're finished a lot of work of us all right but I'm enjoying it I totally enjoy do, doing doing these things but it's small years of um, years of making big shop fittings and furniture and all that sort of heavy stuff I'm over it I just can't lift it I don't want to lift it I don't want to make it and the material is too dear anyway so I like making little things like my boxes and now I'm going to make unusual cutting boards We'll put there for the sander now and then I'll make my juice groove jigs. To that again, didn't I? Juice groove jigs. And uh, we'll take it from there. Yay. Okay, you're putting it for the sander. Yeah, that came out good. Look at that. Very nice. There wasn't many lines either. So I think I panicked a bit with about that. And just changing the cutter now. Put the uh, juice groove jig in. I made my juice groove, juice groove jig come up well. Um, and I went to put my cutter in the router. Got it up as tight as I could and just falls out. There's a tool shop to buy another one. Made one there. $47. I ain't paying $47 for a little cutter. No way in the world. It's ridiculous. I remember I used to buy, I used to buy these. Now I'm renting. When I was young, no, mate, I used to buy these for about eight to ten bucks each, forty-seven dollars. No, 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 not happening. I think I'll go, I'm going to put a bit of tape around this one, just so it um, stays in the holder. The easiest way to do it, and then we'll do the juice groove. Forty-seven dollars. <laughs> okay, just putting the uh, groove in now. You see how it started in the centre, guys? Never, don't start on the corner, but they'll burn. And you've got to keep moving. Again, take a little bit at a time. Just a little bit at a time and just keep moving. And then I'll stop in the center again and turn the machine around. And then do the other half. Now I'm cutting one of them on a uh, 30 degree angle all the way around. It acts like a handle. And spraying them with water to lift the grain. Look at that, guys. Look at the cutter on the jar. Come on, great, isn't it? Very nice. Very nice indeed. And then spray it all with water there. Then just let it dry. And then they're all finished. Look at that. Mineral oil and beeswax on them. Come on, great. Lay them my name in, into the uh, corner. And they come out great, guys. Look at that. We're all finished. They came out really nice. Really nice, guys, didn't they? Just timbers from the big box store. That anyone can get. And they come out so nice, guys. So thanks for joining me today. And uh, join me again, where we'll be making possibly another cutting board. But I'll do it my way and my style. See you then, guys.